Execution wall, I guess. Yes. Yes. All right. There are a few like that. Trice went off. Describe his night. Uh, you know, I think, I think uh, Braylon has had a hard uh, time with getting home because he's game planned, you know. And so for you know him to get a month off and kind of get his engine right, um, he, he, tonight he just wasn't letting that stop him, you know. I'm glad I was able to help him out a couple of times. He was telling me, you know, thank you for like my picks, setting up in the stunts and everything. But you know, that's all him. He's uh he's the leader of our room, and uh, we feed off of him, and, and I'm sure the D line does too. And I think uh, obviously we could play a little bit better defensively, but I think uh, yeah, he, he he brought that juice that helped us, you know, kind of close it out at the end too. Underdog seems to work. Underdog seems to us. When's the rest of the country gonna make our favorite? And I mean, is that a motivational thing for y'all? Um, I think. We've taken on the mentality of the uh, underdog, but yeah, I stopped paying attention to to that stuff a while ago. You know, if football was played in a Vegas sporting book, uh, <laughs> we'd be eight and five. So, yeah, I'm not too worried about all that. Um, you know, I'm sure we'll be, you know, underdogs next week too, and we'll you know put that up on the wall and go to work. You know, it's just trying to go one and zero, oh, and eventually we're gonna go one and zero oh enough times we run out of games. So that's a uh, kind of what we're getting at. So many people called this game a battle of. One team going to the SEC that's really physical and one team from the West Coast that is not physical. How would you say you guys address those concerns tonight? Uh, you know, we won. I'm not going to uh, talk about the, these storylines about us not being tough. You know, we're the number two team in the nation heading into the national championship. You know, if we're not tough and it got us this far, then we're not tough. You know, say what you guys got to say. You cut your hair this summer in Rome, you told me, and yes. you said uh, you wanted to really kind of get rid of the ZTF and just play uh, Husky football. Um, how do you feel that that has paid off in, in uh, you guys going out there, playing what they said you couldn't do is playing big boy football? Yeah, I think um, it, for me it was just like kind of understanding, not a, that like it's not the game's not about you and how good you do it's about the team and so um, I, that was my way of kind of taking the spotlight on me, off of me and just uh, allowing myself to kind of fall into the team and so um, yeah that's all, that's why I've been able to buy into like you know setting picks and things like that on uh, on stunts because um, I know that it's for we rush as a unit that's what we always say so you know I may not be the one that gets home but if someone gets home you know we all feed off of that we all contributed to that so what's it going to be like stepping out there? Onto the field in Houston. Um, it's been a, an emotional roller coaster of a year for you. One last one for your dad. Yeah, you know, um, I feel him pre uh, pregame all the time. I shed a few tears saying my, my pregame um, prayer today. But um, yeah, I'm just gonna use that all to, to you know energize me and, and play for him. And um, you know, I'm blessed to have my mom. You know, she's gonna be out, out there. Including she was out there tonight too. You know, so far from home. So, um, you know, just having that, having my mom there with me while, you know, also feeling my dad's spirit kind of uh, lead me along the way. I think it all, you know, do, work do out. those hugs with Coach DeBoer, do they seem maybe a little bit more special now? What was that? Those hugs with Coach DeBoer? Yeah, you know, I think uh, me and DeBoer always had a, had a pretty good relationship. Um, I've been completely honest with him from the first time I've ever talked to him. You can ask him. I remember he called me into his office, and I, the first thing I said to him was, I'm not going to promise you that I'm not transferring, you know? And he's like, all right, just give us a shot, you know? And so here I am, you know, year six, UW, heading to the Natty. And so, um, yeah, he's definitely taken on, uh, he already took on kind of that father, a father figure role, and now um, he's kind of grown a little bit, you know, with the, uh, with that missing a little bit for myself. Yeah. There's a level of anxiety down the stretch. You know, it takes him like that leg push. I'm not going to lie. I thought, I thought we, it was fine until uh, um, we, we had to stop the clock for DJ's injury. I'm not too sure about how that all went down. I hope he's well. But, um, yeah, I think um, strategically speaking, we would have punted the ball, gave them about 15 seconds. So that was kind of what we were going for, obviously. Um, you can't really plan football sometimes. And so, yeah, I thought I thought we were fine even um, basically until that big play, you know, yeah. because I thought we were still like, all right, let's just go finish it three and out. And we were kind of on the brink of doing that. Got a big, big explosive play. But then after that, I don't really think they did anything. What They had one, maybe one play for 10 yards, and then the rest were all kind of backwards. So, yeah, that's a uh, – it also had to do with the situation, right? Like um, them not being able to go in, not really trying to stay in bounds and or, you know, let the clock run. So, um, yeah, we were just trying to play situational savvy football. What, what did that – 